All right, talking about positioning the, of the patient. Patient positioning is usually done when the patient is totally relaxed during the maintenance phase. That, those three phases we talked about, so that's the maintenance phase. Uh, the position uh, provides good access to the operative site for the surgeon while sustaining uh, adequate circulation and respiratory functioning in the patient. The nurse should be very receptive post-op to complaints of pain by the patient because they are in very unusual positions for many, many hours during surgery. So this puts a lot of strain and uh, causes a lot of pain to muscles and joints. And uh, when this occurs in your patient post-op, make sure you address pain and discomfort very quickly. Positioning of patients should not interfere with, uh, during surgery, should not interfere with normal diaphragm movement or circulation to body parts. Next, we're gonna talk about a pre-op checklist and what it's uh, comprised of. You do have an example of a pre-op checklist in your book. It is entitled Kell Russell Memorial Hospital and it gives you uh, 20 different areas that the LPN uh, has to sign off on. So you can take a look at that. So on a pre-op checklist, some of the things that that en encompasses is that the nurse is making sure that um, permits have been signed and they are on the chart. Uh, allergy information is there. ID bands are on the patient. Uh, skin prep has been done. Uh, removal of things like dentures, glasses, contacts, jewelry, nail polish, uh, hairpins, makeup, any uh, prosthetics. When we're talking about jewelry, a lot of patients do not like to take their wedding bands off um, and they may not be able to get their jewelry off their rings. So the rings can be secured with a piece of tape and just make sure that you document in the chart that the patient did not want them removed. TED stockings applied, uh, pre-op vital signs have been gotten, that's on there. Pre-op medications, okay, those have all been administered. Again, have the patient void before administering the medications. Physical disabilities and diseases have been addressed. The patient's history and physical and all their lab reports are there on the chart and are accessible for the healthcare team. Remind the patient again to, after they've had those pre-op meds, because you know, we're talking about some pretty potent medications. Remind them to remain in the bed. Raise those side rails. Uh, make sure their call light is, is within reach at all times. When a nurse signs a pre-op checklist, they are assuming responsibility for all areas of care on that list. So again, make sure that you have done everything on that list before, before you put your name and signature on the bottom of that list. Um, why are patients in PO pre-op? The answer to that, and we've already said it, is to minimize aspiration. So make sure you remember that. Why are patients in PO pre-op? To minimize aspiration. Now, as far as your quiz, your quiz will end right there. It will not include eliminating errors or anything beyond that. So your quiz stops. The information you will be res responsible for for your quiz stops after the pre-op checklist. So that pre-op checklist information and everything we've talked about up to this point uh, will be fair game for your quiz. All right, so moving on to items that will not be on your quiz, we are going to be talking about eliminating errors or wrong site or procedures. Um, Protocols uh, must be implemented uh, in ambulatory surgery centers, in hospitals, doctor's offices, so we can uh, hopefully eliminate uh, a person from having a wrong procedure. I know a lot of you all, a lot of us have heard about things on the news where a person went in to have a, a lower leg amputation on the left leg and they ended up taking off the right lower extremity off. So things like this can happen. So it's very important that we try to eliminate errors and there's certain uh, protocols that are in place to prevent these wrong site or procedures from happening. So the Joint Commission guidelines to prevent errors. First off, um, how do we do that? Number one, we have a pre-op verification. So a pre-operative verification, verification guarantees all relevant documents and studies are available and that they have met the patient's expectations, their history and physical is there, their consents are there, all the lab results are there. 
So we do that by, number one, a pre-op verification. We're verifying all these things are there, everything's documented, everything is there and available to the healthcare team. Another way we can uh, eliminate errors for wrong sites or procedures is by marking the sites, okay? So marking the site, whatever site is going to be, uh, you know, operated on is marked. Uh, number three, verification by the surgical team members during a timeout. Okay, so during a timeout, this is to verify that we have the correct patient, we are going to be doing the correct procedure on the correct site. Okay, so it's very important that uh, we fulfill all of these different things so we can avoid a wrong site or procedure from occurring um, on our patient. So a legal representative or an active patient must be included in all of these steps. So if a patient refuses to allow marking of an operative site, I don't know why they would, but if they did, make sure you note this uh, on the procedural checklist and you know you've done proper documentation stating that the patient refused to allow markings of the operative site. So just make sure you note that on your procedure checklist and that you have documented that. All right, so transporting to the operating room. Uh, when your patient is being transported to the OR, make sure you compare the patient's ID bracelet to the medical record. Uh, you're gonna assist the patient to the gurney. Direct the family to the appropriate waiting area if they plan on leaving. During the procedure, make sure there is a contact number that is left with the patient's chart and make sure you give the family the number to the nurse's station or the patient's room if they are going to be staying overnight. Uh, the family should be able to visit with the patient before they are transported to the OR. Again, that helps to decrease everyone's anxiety and stress levels. Now preparing for the post-op patient. Okay? So as a nurse, you are going to be preparing on your floor for a post-op patient. So the bed is going to be placed uh, when we're waiting for the patient to arrive uh, on the, let's say, the med surge floor. We uh, are waiting for that patient, waiting for all the orders, so we're making sure that the bed is placed in high position with the side rails down. Okay, I'm going to have to start over with that part. I got uh, had to go get me some water. I'm starting to cough during this lecture. So again, we're preparing for the post-op patient. As the nurse, I should make sure that the bed is placed in high position with the side rails down on the receiving side and make sure the side rail is up on the other side. The reason for this is we do not want the patient to be transferred uh, from the gurney to their bed and roll off into the floor uh, from the other side. So again, that's why it's important to make sure that the side rail is down on that receiving side where we're putting the patient over into their bed in their room and making sure it is that side rails up on the other side because we don't want them to have a fall. Uh, making sure things like a sphygmo manometer, your stethoscope, thermometer, everything is together. Make sure there's an emesis basin in the room. They have a clean gown, washcloths, towels, tissues are available. Your IV pole is there. Your pump is there ready to go. Suction equipment is available. Oxygen equipment is there. You've got your tubing. Everything is set up and available for the patient as soon as they get to that uh, room that they're going to be assigned to in the hospital after their operation. Extra pillows, bedpans, things like that are important. <clears throat> they might have a PCA pump that they're going to have, so you've got the pump and everything set up and ready to go.